This section will instruct the builder to mount the support tubes, install the ballast weight mount tube to the tail boom, and assemble the ballast weight. Locate the following components and parts. Reference construction print E22-2000. This is the ballast support tube and the skid end plug. Install the skid tube end into the ballast support tube and rivet in place. If necessary, file or grind the skid plug end for a proper fit. Install the end plug all the way into the shoulder of the plug. Install the supplied rivets to hold the end plug in place. Make sure to countersink the rivet heads to prevent the ballast weight from binding on the tube. The construction print shows the 5 16 inch bolt holes in the attachment plate are located 9 16 of an inch from this end and 5 16 of an inch from the other end. Locate the holes and mark the hole centers on the support tube weldment. Drill the 5 16 inch bolt holes in the support tube weldment and check the bolt holes for fit. Using the support tube weldment as a template, locate the bolt holes in the mount tube weldment. Use a 5 16 inch drill bit to find the hole centers, then use a drill press to drill the 5 16 inch holes. After drilling the holes, use the 5 16 inch bolts to verify the hole alignment. It is best to have the tail boom mounted to the airframe when locating the support tube assembly. Position the support tube assembly in between the first and second bulkhead with the attachment plate just touching the skin. The end plates must fit snug against the bulkheads. Add shims if necessary. Use C-clamps to hold support tube in position while drilling the four 3 16 inch bolt holes through the support tube and bulkheads. On final assembly, apply a layer of silicone between the support tube attachment plate and tunnel cover to help prevent the aluminum from cracking. From inside the tail boom, drill the two 5 16 inch bolt holes through the tunnel cover using the attachment plate bolt holes as a guide. Install the mount tube weldment to the tail boom with the supplied bolts and on final assembly apply a layer of silicone between the tunnel cover and the attachment plate. The tail boom should be painted before applying silicone.
Molten lead must be used to fill the ballast weight tube. Do not use lead shot, as it would pour out of the hole that is drilled for the security pin. Caution. Use safety gloves and eye protection when pouring molten lead. You may want a professional to fill the ballast weight tube for you, as they will have the proper equipment to do this safely. The total weight of the ballast tube and the end cap will be 25 to 30 pounds. The ballast weight end cap may be bonded, riveted, or welded in place. After the ballast weight is filled with lead, refer to the construction prints for hole location of the security pin. This section will instruct the builder to temporarily install the main rotor shaft, the foot pedal shaft, fit the body to the airframe, and the installation of the doors and their hardware. Locate the following components and parts. Reference construction prints E49-2000, elastomeric rotor hub, and E49-2001, elastomeric main shaft, engine clutch, and engine mount. The rotor system is temporarily installed at this point to help position the body and doghouse for assembly. It is extremely important that you read section 8 of the CDU manual and review the entire video of this section before beginning the actual fitting and assembly. This is the main rotor shaft as received from rotor way. This is the main rotor thrust bearing and the bearing flanges as received. At this time, mark this flange as the top flange in case you have to grind off the edge for clearance of the airframe tube. Install the main rotor thrust bearings and flanges in the hood bracket on the airframe. Note the bearing and flanges are bolted below the hood bracket. Use the four 3 8 inch bolts found on E49 card 1F to bolt the bearing flange assembly to the hood bracket. Locate on E49 card 1F the upper engine mount clevis. Before placing the upper engine mount in position, check for any burrs that may interfere with proper installation of the engine mount. Clamp the upper engine mount clevis in position to the bottom of the square drive tubes. Use a piece of 1 8 inch scrap material between the bottom of the square drive tube and the rear of the clevis as shown. Do not cover the holes with the clamps. Drill the bolt holes through the clevis using the bushings and the airframe tubes as a guide. Note the two bolts that hold the clevis to the front cross tube are 5 sixteenths of an inch and the rear bolt is one quarter inch. After drilling one hole, install the bolt to keep the proper alignment. This is the lower bearing flange assembly. Clamp the lower flange to the front of the square drive tube on the airframe. Using a large builder square, check to see if the top of the flange is even with the top of the square drive tubes. Adjust the flange to make it even. If the angle of the flange is not 90 degrees, clamp it in a vise and use a hammer to bend the flat part until it is at the correct angle. 
You may also grind the surface that is against the square tube to get the bracket 90 degrees, but do not remove material that will leave the flange part less than one-tenth of an inch. With clamps holding the flange to the front of the square drive tube so that the tops are even, draw a line flush with the bottom of the square drive tube using a felt marker. Transfer the mark to the other side and cut the excess with a bandsaw. It is necessary to remove this excess material so the bottom of the flange will not interfere with the upper engine clevis. Assemble the lower main shaft bearing and clamp it to the front of the square drive tube. Remove the three bolts from the main shaft and sprocket hub. Note that the hub and shafts have marks on them to make sure you reinstall the hub in the same orientation because of the close tolerance fit of these three bolts. Install the main shaft by lowering it from above into the top bearing, then into the lower bearing. Level the square drive tubes laterally and fore and aft. Shim under the skids to level the square drive tubes. With the shaft installed, it must be 90 degrees to the square drive tubes, both laterally and fore and aft. Using two protractors, set them for 90 degrees and fasten them to the main shaft as shown. Move the lower bearing laterally until the shaft is 90 degrees to the square drive tubes. If the shaft is not level fore and aft, the holes in the hood bracket may be elongated if necessary to achieve fore and aft alignment. Occasionally, this may not provide enough movement because the main bearing flanges might come into contact with the airframe tube under the hood bracket. If this happens, the bearing flanges can be ground off slightly to allow them to be moved back. Rotorway also recommends the use of a large builder square for checking squareness. When the main shaft is 90 degrees both laterally and fore and aft to square drive tubes, check to make sure that the top of the square drive tube and the bearing flange is even. Drill the holes in the lower bearing flange using the square tube bushings as guides. With the supplied bolts, install the lower bearing and upper mount clevis to the square drive tubes. Then reinstall the complete main shaft assembly.
This is the pedal cross tube. Located on E16 card 1F are the bushings and bolts necessary to temporarily install the cross tube. It is necessary to install the cross tube to verify the floor pan position. To fit the pedal shaft to the airframe brackets, install the nylon bushing into one end of the tube with the aluminum bushing. Now both the aluminum bushing and the nylon bushing to the airframe bracket as shown here. Position that end against the airframe bracket and mark the other end just inside the nylon bushing. Cut the tube to the correct length. Install the bushings and place the tube between the airframe brackets. Install the washers and bolts. There should be no end-to-end -end play or the pedal cross tube should not be binding after the bolts have been installed. Refer to construction print E32-2000, exec 162F, body details. Many of the body panels have pre-drilled master cleco holes. These holes are for initial alignment only and may not necessarily be in the right position to be used for fasteners after all panels are fitted. Before assembling the body panels, sand the edges with medium 100 grit sandpaper. Preassemble the entire body with Clecos before attaching any nut plates or Zeus fasteners. This gives you the opportunity to shift or relocate components somewhat if there is any unacceptable mismatch. Any unused alignment holes may be filled with Bondo. This is the exact 162F tub as received from Rotorway. The tub requires four areas that need to be cut out for the front and rear landing gear. These areas are scribed in the gel coat of the tub. Cut only the amount needed to fit the tub to the airframe. Final trimming will be completed as necessary. Disassemble the front landing gear and install the halves through the holes in the tub. Prop up the rear of the tub or have someone help you during this process. Install the front landing gear on the skids and airframe. Reinsert the landing gear bolts. This is the seat back and interior liners as received from Rotorway. Cut pieces of excess liner material and attach it to the edges of the seat back using masking tape as shown. Start with the front of the seat and wrap around the liner to the back of the seat. These are shims to ensure that the body panels will fit properly when the interior is installed. Drill holes in the liner material where the master holes are located. Install the seat back on the airframe.
temporarily hold this position with a quick grip clamp. Push the seat to the rear and to the pilot's side as far as it will go. The seat back is the only part of the fiberglass body that is securely bolted to the airframe after the final fit of the complete body. The fit of all other panels is determined by the location of the seat back and the airframe. Once the body is completed, the seat back can be shifted slightly on the airframe for a better fit. On final install, the seat back will be bolted in six places as shown by these arrows. You may secure the seat back at this time with two Clecos or use quick grip clamps to hold its position until final positioning. The quick grip clamp allows a little more flexibility when installing the other fiberglass parts. Shims may be added between the seat and the curved airframe tubes to achieve a better fit and to level the body. Shims may also be added to the bolts that hold the seat back to the one inch cross tube. Locate the master holes and install two clecos that hold the tub to the seat back on each side. This is the floor pan as received from Rotorway. Set the floor pan on the airframe. Pull the floor pan forward by holding the seat back against the one-inch cross tube to make the tub fit snug against the floor pan. Clamp the rear of the floor pan to the front of the seat back as shown. Secure the front of the tub to the floor pan with clecos and the master holes. Check alignment by comparing the distance from the front corners of the airframe to the tub on each side. The tub should be centered. Verify that the floor pan is equal distance from the seat back on each side. Measure from the front edge of the seat back to the edge display face of the floor pan. Adjust the floor pan to equal the measurement. Adjust the body support pads as needed to raise the floor pan up off the pedal cross tube. These are the front upper fuselage cowlings as received from Rotorway. Use Clecos and the master holes to install these cowlings. Use as few Clecos as possible during this first fitting process. These are the rear upper fuselage cowlings as received from Rotorway. Install as shown. Install Clecos and master holes. Check the fit of the top rear panels. They may be overlapped to reduce the opening around the tail boom. These are the rear lower fuselage cowlings as received from Rotorway. They have scribed areas that need to be cut out. Hold in place to verify where the opening for the rear landing gear should be. Open the cutouts for the rear landing gear only as much as necessary. Clico the panels with the master holes. The panels should fit evenly all around the tail boom. When the body has been final fitted, there should be enough clearance around the tail boom for the weather stripping that will be glued in place. Do not fasten the bottom overlap yet. This will be trimmed later when the radiator is installed.
Stretch a tape measure around the upper rear curve of the windscreen and the two door posts as shown. This is the roof panel as received from Rotorway. Use the same measurement to install the cabin roof panel. This will ensure that the body is in the correct width in that area. Insert Clecos in the two front locations of the roof panel as shown. Do not fasten the back of the roof panel at this time. Use caution when handling the plexiglass windscreen. If you already haven't done so, sand the edges of the windscreen smooth with 80 to 100 grit sandpaper. This is done to prevent possible cracking during the handling process. When sanding the windscreen, be careful to support the material adequately. Place the windscreen on the body and position it for best fit. Check that the windscreen is matched in position on both sides of the floor pan. The windscreen should be allowed to fit naturally without being forced into position. However, it may need a firm push or pull in some areas to install the clecos or bolts. Check the alignment and curvature of the top of the windscreen with the body. It should match the curvature of the seat back. Find an area where the windscreen fits well and hold it in place at that point with clecos. Use a unit bit to drill the cleco holes as this type of drill bit is less likely to cause the material to crack. Position the door post in the floor pan jockle. Mark the front part of the door post where they need to be trimmed. Attach the door post to the tub with clecos. The upper rear part of the post will be fitted later. Check the windscreen for an all-around fit. Trimming and fitting of your windscreen will vary. Try to rotate or shift your windscreen to minimize the amount to be trimmed. You should have the door posts in place before you do any trimming. If your windscreen fits like this on the lower passenger or pilot side, it may be trimmed off for a better fit. Mask the area to be trimmed with masking tape. Remove the windscreen to trim off any excess. An air grinder with a two to three inch abrasive wheel, a sanding cone, or a cut off wheel works well for this. The door posts are supplied longer than needed. 
trim off a little at a time and fit them carefully to avoid cutting them too short. Notch out the area in the upper body panel where the door post will fit. Gradually enlarge the cutout as necessary for the best fit. Secure the door post with a clico when the desired fit is achieved. Now with the door post clicked in place, verify the edge of the windscreen matches the recess in the door post. Sand or trim the edges as needed. Verify the body has been fitted and is level and straight on the airframe. Drill with a 1 8 inch drill bit and secure the seat back to the airframe with clicos. Fabricate a simple tool to transfer the location of the seat back to the outside body panels. Lay out and drill the holes for the seat back to the body panels. As per the construction print, you will notice that the screws and nut plates are two and one half inches on center, and the Zeus fasteners are five inches on center. Occasionally, the proper spacing is not equal in all areas. You can adjust the distance slightly to make the fasteners fit, as long as you keep the distance between them as close to the distance called for in the construction print. Note, the body parts are held in position with nut plates and screws and Zeus fasteners. The windscreen is secured using these 632 by 1 half inch Phillip head screws, washers, and lock nuts. This is the doghouse panels as received from Rotorway. Place the doghouse front panel on top of the body so that the screws can be spaced around the edges of the doghouse in that area. Continue drilling and fitting panels. As panels are being fitted, clicos can be moved and edges trimmed as necessary. Check that the four seams in this area come together at the same point. If they do not, a file or wood block wrapped in sandpaper works well for precise trimming and fitting and will leave a smooth finish. Sand or file away a little at a time. This shows the fitted body panels with clicos.
After all the body panels are trimmed, fitted, and clicked in place, install the front doghouse panel. Note, the use of a heat gun can be beneficial in reforming or changing the shape of a fiberglass panel. By applying heat to an affected area and hand forming, the panel will take the proper shape. There should be no pressure on the windscreen from the front part of the doghouse. If the collective actuator fork contacts the fiberglass, adjust the doghouse and the body for more clearance. However, if this does not help, the actuator fork can be trimmed off as necessary up to the spot face, which is the circular machine flat around the hole shown here. If you need to remove some of the excess material of the actuator fork, do not disassemble the main shaft. Cut in place with a hacksaw or air grinder. This is the doghouse inspection panel as received from Rotorway. Locate the hinge on E32 card 1F. Install the hinge on the doghouse inspection panel as shown. Cut a small notch in the inspection panel. This will prevent the hinge pin from coming out. Drill and countersink the rivet holes in the panel and match drill the holes in the hinge. Drill the other side of the hinge and rivet the four 832 nut plates to the hinge. Cut out an opening in the doghouse for the hinge to fit into. File or sand the fiberglass underneath so that the hinge will fit flat against the underside of the doghouse. Mount the panel to the doghouse with the four screws, then locate and install the Zeus fasteners. Install the rear doghouse panel. Check the swash plate clearance around the doghouse opening. Trim and fit the doghouse as necessary, then install remaining clicos. Note, do not locate a Zeus fastener where it would come in contact with the actuator fork. The openings around the landing gear should be close to, but not touching the gear. This will need to be trimmed later because the weight of the completed ship will cause the gear to flex. When the fit is satisfactory, open the clico holes in the seat bottom to 3 16 inch and install the bolts. Secure the seat with two more bolts on each side through the seat back and the one inch diameter cross tube of the airframe. Note the graphic arrows pointing the bolt locations. Using templates E32-1 and E32-2, Cut out the seat back and battery access panels out of 50 thousandths aluminum material. The 2 inch by 4 inch doublers are to reinforce the seams. Use a spray adhesive to secure the templates to the material. Note, these templates are also used to locate the electrical components on the seat back panels. The templates face the engine. Position the aluminum panels on the shiny area of the seat back as shown. The top of the panel should be one and three-eighths of an inch below the top edge of the shiny surface. The side of the panel should be two and seven-eighths of an inch from the edge of the shiny surface.
Use the battery access panel template to verify the position of the access panel on the seat bottom, passenger side. Now attach the template to the aluminum and cut the material and bend to fit the contour of the seat back. After the access panel has been fitted and the holes drilled for the Zeus fasteners, mark the openings to be cut three quarters of an inch smaller than the panels on all sides. Install the Zeus fasteners as shown. Cut five pieces of foam in half. Wire the five pieces under the pilot seat and the five pieces under the battery inspection panel on the passenger seat. Use safety wire in a cross pattern. This precaution will provide a good deal of cushioning in the event of a hard landing. Using template E32-2, cut out the aluminum heel plates and install them in the floor pan using the eight pop rivets for each. These are wear plates and also provide a smooth surface for your heels to slide on during directional control movements. These are the cyclic inspection panels as received from Rotorway. Install the cyclic inspection panels in the floor pan. Trim as necessary. The rear edge of the panel should tuck under the front edges of the seat back. The panels will be secured with screws and nut plates on final assembly. Do not cut out the holes for the cyclic boots at this time. These are the cabin comfort parts as received from Rotorway. The cabin comfort small parts are located on E54 card 1F. Use sandpaper to smooth the inside of the three-way collector inlets where the two butterflies will be installed. Note the inlets are directly across from each other. The outlet is the hole that is 90 degrees to the two inlets. Trace and cut out the butterflies of 50 thousandths aluminum material to fit the openings. Bend the butterfly shafts 90 degrees, three and one quarters of an inch from one end. The shafts may be heated to make bending easier. Measure one inch from the end of each inlet and drill a one quarter inch hole parallel to the outlet hole. To align the proper open and close location of the butterfly, install the shaft in the hole and rotate the rod until there is one half inch between the rod and the outlet hole as shown. Hold this position and make a mark on the shaft inside the collector. This will indicate the full open position for the butterfly when installed. Place a piece of tape on the shaft. Move the shaft to full open and full closed positions. This will verify that the butterflies will be mounted correctly before drilling the attachment holes. Remove the shaft and drill the two 1 8 inch holes 3 quarters of an inch from each side of the opening. Make sure to reference the marks you made on the shaft for the correct hole position before drilling. Measure three quarters of an inch from the edge of the butterfly and drill only one eighth inch hole. Install the shaft and butterfly in the collector with one Cleco and mark each side of the shaft. Remove the shaft and butterfly. Clico them together. Align the shaft with the marks and drill the second hole in the butterfly. Install the shafts and butterflies in the collector and file them to fit if necessary.
Remove the shaft and measure one and one eighth inch from the bend. With the number 53 drill, drill a hole parallel to the butterfly shaft and cut off the excess material. This hole is where the control cable will be attached. Reinstall the shafts and butterflies and click in place. Remove one Clico and install the pop rivet, then install the second pop rivet. Final install of the butterflies on the shaft in the collector. Locate and mount the collector to the floor pan in front of the passenger foot pedals. Rivet two nut plates to the collector for mounting to the floor pan. This is the cabin of fresh air scoop that will be installed in the center of the tub, 20 and 1 half inches from the front edge of the tub, just in front of the engine air scoop. Use the scoop as a pattern to cut up the hole in the tub floor. Attach the scoop to the tub with pop rivets and use silicone as a gasket. The fresh air scoop installed looking from inside the tub. Next you will need to cut slots in the front of the floor pan for cabin comfort ventilation. Use tape to lay out the cabin air slots. There will be four slots, two on each side. Find the center of the floor pan and measure four inches to the left and four inches to the right. This will be the starting point of the slots. Each slot will be three and one-half inches long and three-eighths of an inch wide. The slots will be three and one-half inches apart. Keep the front edge of all the slots three-quarters of an inch from the windscreen edge of the pod. Drill a 3 8 inch hole at each end of the slots. Use a cutting wheel on an air grinder to cut the slot openings between the 3 8 inch holes as shown. Remove the tape and deburr the slots with fine sandpaper. Locate the plenum. The plenum can be fiberglass to the underside of the floor pan. Make sure the plenum is centered and the slots in the floor pan are over the plenum opening for the airflow. Hold in place with clamps while bond is curing. Paint the exterior of the plenum black before final installation so it will be less visible from above. Reference print E41-2000 doors. Doors and stiffeners as received from rotorway. Small parts and hardware for the doors can be located on E41 card 1F. Cut several pieces of 3 16 inch thick cardboard into 1 inch wide strips and tape them to the inside door openings. 
The cardboard will provide the clearance necessary between the door stiffener and the body when opening and closing the door. Fit the door stiffener tight against the cardboard. It may be necessary to cut the stiffener to make it fit. If it is necessary, remove a section of stiffener so that when it is butted together, there is a tight fit between the stiffener and the cardboard. Use masking tape to hold in place. Hold the plexiglass door against the stiffener so that it extends beyond the stiffener all the way around the door. Use masking tape to hold in place. Lay out the location of the rivet holes around the door with a felt tip pin. The rivets will be two inches apart and centered on the stiffener. Place a thin piece of wood or metal scrap between the stiffener and the body panel when drilling to prevent damage to the body panel. The 1 inch holes drilled and the Clecos installed. Using a felt tip pin, outline both sides of the stiffener. Trim the plexiglass to the line and outside edge of the stiffener. Use a grinding wheel and sandpaper to trim the edge. This shows the plexiglass door panel trimmed to match the door stiffener. Use a utility knife blade to cut the protective film on the plexiglass even with the inside mark of the stiffener. Remove the strip of protective film from the plexiglass door. Use 220 grit sandpaper to sand the plexiglass and the stiffener where they will be bonded together. Countersink the holes in the plexiglass for the head of the pop rivets. Use a rivet to verify the depth of the countersink. Prepare some resin and the catalyst and apply a coat on the edges of the plexiglass door and the stiffener where they will be bonded. Place the stiffener on the plexiglass and install the pop rivets. Allow the resin to cure. Use the stem of a rivet and tap out the head of the rivets as shown.
spirally into the pop rivets flush with the stiffener. Sand the surface of the stiffener smooth with sandpaper. Cut a piece of plexiglass and smooth the edges to fit against the stiffener and door. Use this piece of plexiglass to apply bondo in the corner where the door and stiffener meet as shown. Use template E41-1 and E41-2 when fabricating the door hinges and latches. Drill the holes where indicated, then cut out the parts. Bend the door latches where indicated on the templates. Remember, there will be a pilot and passenger side latch, so they must be opposite. Draw a line parallel to the bottom of the door, seven inches from the bottom edge. This will be the location of the bolt to hold the hinges to the door. Install only one Cleco in each hinge. Refer to construction print E41-2000 for hinge install strip location. The stall strip should be installed on center between the bolt holes and riveted in place with six evenly spaced rivets. Countersink the holes before installing the rivets. Before painting, cover the rivets and blend the stall strip to the door with body filler to form a smooth aerodynamic surface at the leading edge and at the top and bottom. Drill out the Cleco hole with a 3 16th inch drill bit and countersink the hole. Install one bolt in each hinge to hold the hinge to the door. Bolt the two parts of the hinge together. Place the cardboard around the door opening. Hold the door in the opening and drill one hole in the part of the hinge on the door post.
Open the door. If the hinges do not try to move, they are in alignment. Drill the remaining hole and install the bolts. Reference the construction print to locate the position of the door latches. Mark the positions and remove the doors. Place the bent latch on the spacer. Position the latch so the bend clears the door stiffener. Rotate the latch to verify the clearance between the latch and stiffener, then reinstall the doors without the cardboard strips. The weather stripping is used on the doors as gasket material and should not be installed until after the doors have been painted. Locate and cut the slots in the floor pan for the bottom latch. Cut out and rivet in place a piece of 50 thousandths aluminum around the slit as a wear plate. Note the rear door latch uses a pin through the door for outside locking. Note do not remove the protective film from the doors until after all the work and painting is finished. At this point, the body has been assembled and fitted, with only minor details remaining. Zeus fasteners and nut plates should be installed in all panels. Complete the following as the body is disassembled for painting. Cut an opening in the side air scoops as shown. Leave about a quarter inch lip around the edge of the opening to provide stiffness. Cut out the opening of the air intake scoop in the bottom of the tub. Leave a slight lip about one quarter inch around the opening for stiffness. After the windscreen has been completely fitted, remove it from the ship and mask off three quarters of an inch from the outside of the windscreen edge all the way around. In the lower front corners of the windscreen, cut pieces of fiberglass mat and fit them so that there will be a three and a half inch radius in those corners. Cut and fit the fiberglass to make a smaller radius on the upper corners of the windscreen. With a utility knife, cut the edge of the mask area and remove the protective coating. Sand the area with 220 grit sandpaper so the resin will stick to the plexiglass. Place a strip of fiberglass cloth on a clean surface and saturate it with resin. Apply a coat of resin to the sanded edges of the windscreen. Place the cloth around the edges of the windscreen, allowing the edge to overhang. When the resin hardens, trim off the overhang with a razor knife. Note, if a smooth surface is desired, apply a thin covering of Bondo on the reinforced cloth and sand smooth before painting. Redrill all the windscreen screw holes with 5 32 inch drill. Sand and polish the seam on the top of the instrument pod. Fit and install the front inspection panel. Sand the edges of the panel for the desired fit.
install the six deuce fasteners. This section will instruct the builder to reassemble the body apart from the airframe to check and refine the overall fit, install interior liners, and prepare the fiberglass for painting. Note the tail boom may be removed to make it easier to work on remaining assemblies if you prefer. These are the interior liners as received from Rotorway. Reassemble the body panels, seat back, and floor pan. Protect the bottom of the tub with cardboard or some other padding. Check all panels for fit and finish any sanding or trimming if necessary. Measure one and three-eighths of an inch forward of the front edge of the doorpost. Mark this distance on the floor pan. This is the area where the curved part fits and where the liner goes between the fiberglass and the windscreen. Hold the liner in place and position it to find the best fit on the leading edge of the doorpost. Make a mark on the liner in the same location as the previous mark on the floor pan. Remove the liner to cut on the mark, removing part of the lip as shown. The cutout area will fit between the windscreen and the floor pan as shown here. The radius of the liner should match the radius of the fiberglass on the edge of the windscreen, as shown here. Hold the liner in place with masking tape or clamps. The curvature of the liner should match the front edge of the doorpost. Mark the outline of the door opener on the liner. Remove the liner and trim outside the line, leaving a little excess for final trimming. Gradually trim the rear edge of the liner until it fits against the lip of the door opening. The liners will be held in place with strips of Velcro. The Velcro hooks will be glued to the fiberglass panels and the Velcro loops to the liners with contact cement. Cut the Velcro in strips and glue them to the door posts as shown. Also cut short strips and glue them in between the screw holes on the front edge of the post. To use contact cement, apply it to both surfaces being joined together and allow it to dry for about 15 minutes. then join the surfaces together. Make sure the fiberglass surfaces are clean and free of dust. On reassembly of the windscreen, you may need to trim off the ends of any windscreen screws that interfere with the liners. This is the doorpost liner installed. 
Fit the eyebrow windows. Trim around edges as necessary so that the window fits into the recess in the fiberglass panel. Drill holes for the screws evenly spaced around each window as shown. Use clicos to establish fit. To fit the liner to the upper front body panel, remove the panel from the body. Position the liner in the body panel for the best fit in the window opening. Hold the liner in place with masking tape or clamps. Mark the outline of the door opening on the liner. Remove the excess material by cutting outside the line, leaving a little to gradually trim for a better fit. The edges can be sanded if necessary. Now check the panel for fit. The edge of the liner should match the curvature of the door opening. Cut strips of Velcro and attach them to the panel and liner with contact cement. Locate the Velcro hooks to the fiberglass between the screw holes. Grind or file off any excess screws that interfere with liners. Drill the holes through the liner material for the screws that hold the panel to the seat back. Reinstall the panel on the body. The liner fits between the panel and seat back. Trim off any liner material that extends beyond the seat back. Trim the eyebrow liner where it overlaps the door post liner.
Hold the eyebrow window in place with Clicos. Trace the opening of the liner on the window with a grease pencil. Mask off the window inside the mark. Paint this edge of the window with the same paint as used for the body. The liners can be overlapped or butted together where they meet at the top of the cabin as shown. Before doing any painting, fill any hole or noticeable depression with Bondo prior to sanding. Final sanding body panel should include sanding with 400 grit sandpaper and then lightly with 600 wet and dry paper. Use plenty of water. It is desirable to achieve a smooth satin finish on the fiberglass panels before painting. tail boom can be sanded and painted along with the body panels. Scotch Bite works well for sanding the tail boom. Rotaway recommends the use of a two-part polyurethane paint for the body and tail boom. Polyurethane paints are readily available and come in a variety of colors. We recommend painting the panels and tail boom when they are disassembled. That way all overlapping areas will have a coat of paint. After final body assembly, mask off and paint the trim scheme of your choice.